Do you ever wonder why or what had to happen that there is no inventory on the market, right? If you've at all thought about buying a property or looked into buying a property, even turn the news on for a minute, you will have probably come to realize there is a massive housing shortage currently in the United States. So you probably think to yourself, how did this happen? Well, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through what took place to cause this massive housing shortage, how it started 10 years ago, and what we can really do, if anything, to fix it. So please make sure you guys are clicking that like button for me. Make sure you guys are subscribing to the channel. Click that little bell notification. Every Friday we're uploading these videos plus some special favors that come through um, during the week. So really drop your comments below. It really helps out my channel. So let's get right to it. So what you're seeing right now is homes built by year. Now this is directly from the St. Louis Fed data. Now what I want you to look and see is by year, it gives us the total number of single units that are built. What this basically means is on each one of these homes, it gives me the year and the number of one unit properties that are being built every single year. And if you look pretty much starting in about 1990, every single year, we have about a million houses being built of single family homes. We have a million, about 837, a million, a million. It kind of comes down. And then right at about 2000, we start ticking it up. Obviously, there's more people, there's more population. Things are growing and home builders are building. So starting in about 2000, between 2000 and about 2007, we had on average about 1.3 to 1.4 million single family, one unit properties built and delivered to the market, all right? Now, what happened is, is what we, they obviously done with the census is they understand just with normal population growth, as well as older housing, falling out of the supply, obviously dilapidated houses from the early 1900s having to be blown down. You obviously have turnover just like anything else in any other industry. You need to typically build about 1.2 to 1.4 million houses per year just to meet normal demand. Now, it's very important to note that the housing crisis was not simply caused just because of an oversupply. Yes, they did overbuild a little bit because these are just one unit houses. They built multifamily and all other types. So there was a slight overbuilding. Well, what you can see is we were building starting in about 2004 and 2005, we were delivering to the market somewhere in the neighborhood between about 1.5 to 1.6 million homes. So that's 1.6 million homes that they were delivering, single family homes, pretty much 2005, 2006, 2007. So you're looking at those numbers. So then what you're gonna notice is, starting in 2008, we had a massive drop off. We only had all of a sudden about 800 single family homes being built, right? Well, why was that happening? Well, we had the housing crisis that happened, right? So people, obviously, I was in the industry at the time, you immediately overnight were getting a call from your bank, hey, stop construction, we're not funding your project anymore. Hey, there's a foreclosure crisis coming with all these individuals that bought multiple investment properties on stated income loans. You know, all these loans are coming due. We basically have way too many people that bought way too many speculative houses on really funny mortgages and we're having a big issue and they stopped it, right? And so, like I said, roughly typically about a million homes is what they were always building. And obviously they had to uptick as population grew. Well, guess what happened? Starting in 2009, we started building only 520,000 homes per year, okay? Well, even back in the way less population, 1999, 1998, 1997, we're building 1 million to 1.2 million homes per year. So, oh shoot, we're building 60% less homes per year. Let's see how long that went for. Well, uh-oh, we didn't, we built a half a million homes in 2009, half a million homes in 2010, half a million homes in 2011, under half a million in 12, half a million in 13, 600,000 in 14, 600,000 in 15, 700,000 in 16, 700,000 in 2018, 2018 and 2019, we didn't even build a million homes. So look at all those years. We went an entire decade where the average amount of single family, one unit homes that were being built and delivered to the market was only 600,000 homes. 600,000 homes, okay? We literally built, before even this little bubble where we were building almost three times as many, we were only building about 60% of the homes that we were building just in a normal everyday market when there was far less individuals living here in the United States. I mean, shoot, if you go back here, we hadn't built that few of homes ever, ever. Look at that. In 1968, when this metric started getting done, we built 858,000 homes, okay? 
And that right there was in 1968. Way less people in the US, way less people. Now, let's go and look. Oh shoot, we were only building 483,000 homes in 2012. So, what happens when you don't build homes for an entire decade? And all, it worked fine for a little while because guess what? We built so many homes between 2000 and 2000 and pretty much eight that we had a lot of excess inventory. So even though that inventory right here and all those years, it held us and we didn't have a big issue. But guess what? After every single year not building enough houses, all of a sudden this oversupply ran out. And then all of a sudden in about 2017, they started to realize, uh-oh, we may not have as many houses, right? So what you're gonna see here is, is on our supply chart. So coming into our housing supply, on our housing supply, look, 2006, we had about four months of houses, okay? About four months of houses, right in 2000, pretty much 2004, 2005. Then we started building all those houses. And what happened is housing supply started to obviously go up. Now, where we like to typically be is this line right here. About a six and a half month supply of houses is a comfortable, very good, healthy market. Healthy market, okay? Now, you'll see pretty much, like I was telling you, right at about, we maintained that six, and then about, we started gobbling up all the houses, right? And so, what ends up happening is we were tracking around a four and a half to five month supply of houses on the market. Then we started getting a little bit too high when the market, basically, if you guys all remember in 2018, interest rates went way up, people started freaking out a little bit. Well, what happened obviously when 2020 in this massive shortage of houses? One, we ran out of the supply from all the years of not building. But more importantly, what happened is, if you've watched any of my other videos, between 1988 and 1994, Okay. There were more babies born during that period of time in history than any other period of time. Almost for birth rates during those years, between those exact years, were the highest period in history and about 20% more than the previous generation. Well, guess what? Somebody born in 1988 is turning 33 years old today in 2021. Why is that important? The average age of a homeowner is 33 years old. So did you ever wonder why? that supply all of a sudden started to fall down, just year one of this housing birth hit the market and started to gobble up that supply, right? Now, what's happening is we're right now at about a four month supply of houses, max. Now, that is nationwide. When you break that down into kind of hot spots and you pull out some of the rural areas and those, you're more looking like a three month supply of houses. What does that mean? That means we don't even have half the amount of houses we need just in a normal, stable housing environment. We're 50% short on supply. So how can we fix that? Well, I mean, you can't just immediately make houses appear. So let's go here. What this is gonna show us, you can see new construction housing starts, okay? We're now pulling a bunch of permits. We're trying to get housing started. We basically are delivering, the plan to basically deliver is about 1.4 million houses of new construction homes this year, okay? That's 1.4. Now, you, I just showed you that we were roughly building about 700,000 houses too short for all of those years. Now, let's say we need to build about 1.2 to 1.3 million houses a year just to meet a normal population. Now we just have the largest group of homeowners ever reaching home buying age. So truthfully speaking, if you look at the Census Bureau, you go to the St. Louis Fed, they're saying about 1.5 million houses is going to be needed building to meet normal current demand. Well, that's fine if we do that meet normal current demand today. But what about all the pent up demand because of all the lack of building? That's just new homeowners entering into the market, right? So how are we gonna possibly fix that? We obviously, you can see right now, we're basically showing we're roughly down here. We need to get up here just for a normal healthy market, right? Now, look on this. I want you guys to show, people say, oh, Brian, the foreclosures are gonna ruin everything. Forbearance are gonna ruin everything. All these things are gonna freak, it, freak out, okay? Now, one thing you have to understand about this, this is a lagging indicator, but one thing that I want you guys to understand, very, very importantly, is I want you to see, we have a 17% increase in prepayment penalty. What that means is people paying off their loan. 28% foreclosure start. People are like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Like, 
oh my god, they must have ticked up. This is going to happen. I'm going to show you in the next slide why that's not the case. And then we have about a 16% drop in delinquencies a month over month. So things are improving pretty greatly. Now, what I want you guys to show is right here. This is a very, very important board. Okay. Now, we have a breakdown of loans that are 90 days delinquent or in foreclosure. Okay. This is directly out of Black Knight. Now, what you can see based on these different charts, these are the people that are actively in forbearance. Okay. And then these are the people that are in active okay, mitigation. Okay. So let's go ahead and we're going to basically look at these two numbers together and we're dealing with roughly about 1.3 million houses. Okay. 1.3 million houses. Now, 1.3 million houses that are potentially going to foreclose. Now, to give you guys some statistics, back in 2008 through about 2012, the highest we ever saw of actually homes being foreclosed on that entered into foreclosure was roughly in the neighborhood of about 40%. Now, since then, there's been massive laws that have hit that are really going to handicap. They have to do workouts. And mind you, these people have a ton of equity compared to those people. But let's play devil's advocate. And let's say we're going to do 33%. 33%. So let's say 1.3 million. Divide that in a third, right? What are we going to get? We're going to get roughly get about 450,000 houses that could hit the market in a foreclosure, right? Potentially. And that's worst case scenario. That's insanity. This won't happen, but I want to I play devil's advocate. It's 450 houses right now that where we're at. Now, let's go back and let's look at our chart, okay? So let's go back here. And what we're going to basically see, and let me get my eraser out so I can erase this for you guys. So you guys can kind of see exactly where we're at. So now what I want you guys to basically go ahead and view is when we're going ahead and we're looking at this housing supply, and I want to go in and I'm going to say, let's go in, and I'm going to use a different color so you guys can see this. So let's go in and basically say right now we're sitting at a housing supply of here. Okay. So this healthy six and a half month supply of houses means we roughly need about 1.7 million houses listed for sale. Okay. Now, right now, where it's sitting, we have just about 1 million houses that are listed for sale. Okay, we need 700,000 houses right now more on the market, just right now. Okay, and we need to be able to continue that. Now, what did I just show you guys right over here on this board? How many houses could we potentially have hitting the market? If all that worst case scenario happens, 450, right? Now, let's say all 450,000 of those houses went ahead and they hit the market. Okay, what does that give us? That gives us a big whopping 1.45 million houses. This is perfect market scenario. Look how short we still are. And that's a one-time occurrence. That 450 isn't coming on every single month. This is the total amount of houses that potentially could hit the foreclosure market at any one time, right? So, question. If we go back here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at our building and we're going to say, oh my God, we built all these houses. We have all these things. What, what are we going to possibly do? We've got to be able to catch up. Now, I want you guys to look at this. Now, look at all these millions of all the single family homes that hit the market for all those years. Okay? And now, all of you guys, if you guys owned a home, would probably know back in 1999, we didn't have a housing you know, massive oversupply. No, this was normal. We needed to build a million to a million three houses before having the massive influx of all these people reaching home buying age. We just saw what the first year of a five-year trend is going to look like. Now, if we go in and we start building this year 1.4 million houses, say we try to catch up, question is, how do we possibly build for when we screwed up and for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 years did not build more than 1 million homes when pretty much every year, but a very couple for the previous 40 years, maybe five years out of the previous 40 years, we always built a million houses. So when you think to yourself, oh, house prices are going to go down, man. All these foreclosures are going to hit the market and save the day. Look at the math. Look at the data. See how few of houses were built for so long. Now, think to yourself, how long does it take to get a house onto the market. Now, if we're gonna just now start seeing houses being delivered this summer, every month that goes by that we have a shortage, that carries over that demand to a next month. 
if I have 100,000 people that want to buy houses this month and only 50,000 to get a house, and then next month I have another 100,000, well, guess what? The 50,000 that didn't buy last month, even if 25,000 of them still want to buy and 25,000 say goodbye, guess what? Next month, I don't just have 100,000. I have 125,000 new people. And in that month, of those 125,000 people, if only 75 of them can buy houses, then I got 50,000 carrying over the next month. Now I have 150,000. You see how pent-up demand is built? So when you're thinking to yourself, I'm going to sit on the sidelines and wait for house prices to go down. What I want you to do is I want you to look through this data, use data because numbers do not lie. And I want you guys to think to yourself when you're driving by and you're looking like, oh, I think that house price is going to go down. I want you to think like, okay, well, if that house price is going to go down, that means I got a bunch of have new houses. So let me sit down and see how many brand new houses are just popping up for sale and are staying on the market because that's the only way. And you know the most dangerous thing that nobody is talking about is, is the most dangerous type of buyer is a first time home buyer. And you know why they're the most dangerous type of buyer? It's for this simple fact. So let's go in here. I'm gonna write, give you guys an idea. So if I'm a buyer and I have a house to sell, right? And I wanna take it, buy a house, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna give a house to the market, right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take a house out of the market, resulting in a net effect of zero, right? I gave one to the market because I listed my house for sale, and then I took one from the market because I bought one if I am actually a reoccurring or a, second, a subsequent use home buyer. Now what happens is guess what? If I'm a first time home buyer, what am I doing? I'm moving out of my apartment, I'm moving out of my rental house that's gonna be rented to another tenant, and what am I doing? That little house that's in the pool, I'm pulling it out, and I'm not giving anything back into it. We're stealing inventory. We're taking inventory off it. We're consuming inventory. So we have so many first time home buyers that are going to be reaching home buying age more than ever in US history, coming off the fact that we screwed up and didn't build over a million houses for 13 years. Now we have extremely low interest rates that are still fueling it. So next time, before you think to yourself, I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna just wait for house prices to come down, let some data make some sense into your brain and let the actual numbers do the thinking for you rather than your emotions.